This colorful and fishy looking fly is a creation of Nick Vlahos, a fly tire and designer from Louisiana, and is designed for redfish and speckled trout. Nick sells this fly through his website, sandbarflies.com, and also through Orvis and Fulling Meal. And while I haven't seen Nick tie this fly, the version we're going to tie in this video is very similar to his commercial version of the fly. I wanted to tie our version on a Gamakatsu B10S in size 1.0, but of course you could tie a smaller version in a size 2 or so. The thread I'm using today is Beavis Power Thread in 140 denier, and I'm going to start it just about a hook eye length back, and I'm going to wrap it all the way back to about the hook point. And that's going to mark the rearmost portion of my body. And then I'm going to wrap back forward to just behind the forwardmost portion of my thread. For eyes, we're going to use Hairline's painted lead eyes in size large, but you could also use medium or even bead chain eyes for shallower water. So we want our eye to be about a quarter of an inch back from the center of the eye of the hook. So measuring from the eye of the hook back to the center of the eye, we want about a quarter of an inch space there. So we hold those eyes at an angle and we make eight or 10 cross wraps in this direction. Straighten our eyes out and make eight or 10 cross wraps in another direction, forming our figure eight over the top of the eyes. Then we make a few stirrup wraps to tighten the eyes down and then some horizontal tightening wraps to tighten everything up. And then we move our thread back to the rearmost portion of our thread wraps. We want to make sure our eyes are aligned perpendicular to the shank of the hook. And then for a little extra durability, we're going to add some super glue to the eyes, just a little dab to the top and the bottom, in this case, fly tires Z-Mint, and this will help fix those eyes in place. For the tail of our fly, we're going to use two types of hackle feathers. We're going to use a Strung Chinese saddle hackle in purple. You can certainly use slop in or other neck hackle if you like. And we're going to use a grizzly uh, neck hackle from a booger pack. And we prep these feathers by cutting them to three and a quarter inches long from the tip. And then we strip about a quarter of an inch from the end of the feather. And then we align these feathers. You notice there's a concave side to each of the feathers and a convex side. We align the concave side, get our tips aligned as closely as possible. And then this is where a rotary vise really comes in handy. We, we rotate our vise horizontally so we can tie these to the side of the hook. And we place these feathers on the side of the hook with the concave side away from the hook shank. Notice the curve, the feathers are curving up. And we place it where the barbules are over our thread, and we want to tie in on the barbules, not on the actual bare feather shaft because it's, it's quite fragile and could easily break. So we begin our tie in over the barbules of the feather and then wrap forward over the, over the shank of the feather and then back to our original tie in point. And we can rotate it to straighten things out just a little bit if need be. Now the grizzly hackle is also trimmed to three and a quarter inches and we strip about a quarter of an inch of it. It also has a convex and a concave side, but for the grizzly hackle, notice we're gonna tie it with the concave side toward the hook. This just gives our tail a little bit, little bit more random action in the water and, and hopefully makes it a little more fishy. So we wrap over the barbules as before and then over the feather shaft and then wrap back and that completes the tie-in of our feathers. Now you notice it's not critical that these, these are exactly lined up or even straight because that randomness again gives, gives that tail a little better action in the water. So we rotate our vise to the opposite side of the hook and tie in two more purple saddle hackle feathers and another grizzly hackle feather. And we again take our super glue and, and give a light coating to each side of these thread wraps to increase our durability and help keep these feathers from pulling out while fishing. The body of our fly is made from two different colors of Senyo's laser dubbing, fluorescent chartreuse and purple. 
And we start with the purple color and we begin by pulling out a very small bunch of laser dubbing. And you notice this is this is quite small. And if you want a quantity reference, when I twist it, it's about the size of a number two pencil lead. Well, we certainly don't want too much dubbing. It's better to err on the side of not enough. So notice it's quite ragged on each end. So we rip stack this, as it's called, and we just pull the fibers out on each end and try to align them as best possible. And this helps keep all of our fibers together and once we get them aligned as much as possible, they're still going to be wispy on the ends. We lay the center of that bunch right over our thread, and I try to cover the sides of the hook, if I can, with the dubbing. And then I take a couple of very loose thread wraps and then tighten down on this, and that ties in that bunch of dubbing. We rotate our hook to hook point up. We pull another small bunch of dubbing from the purple pack and we rip stack it just as we did the first, first group, lay the center of it on the thread, take a couple of loose wraps and cinch down on it. Now we bring our thread directly toward us in a horizontal position and then we reach under and pull the front part of the dubbing back and then wrap our thread forward to about a sixteenth of an inch in front of the dubbing and leave our thread hanging there. And now we include a fairly unique feature of this fly, and this is the inclusion of two of these tapered foam glitter strips. Uh, one tied in here at the hook point and another tied in at the front of the eye of the hook. Now these serve to help the hook rod uh, point up, uh, they imitate gills, and they help move more water as we retrieve the fly. Now these foam strips or paddles are made from a sheet of red glitter foam, this 1.5 millimeter craft foam, and it comes in these 12 by 18 sheets, and one of these will make hundreds of flies. These foam paddles are tapered from top to bottom, and they are cut 5 eighths of an inch long and a quarter of an inch wide, and then we use our scissors to slightly taper them from the base up to each corner. We want to tie this paddle in just in front of our purple dubbing below the hook point, and I place the narrow end of the paddle on the hook shank, and I angle it toward myself because as I wrap my thread around, it's going to want to rotate over the top of that hook shank. So I give it a few wraps just to tie down that bottom eighth of an inch or so, and you notice the top of the paddle is just a little bit below the hook point, say an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth is, is just fine and I leave my thread hanging about a sixteenth of an inch in front of the paddle. And now we switch to a chartreuse laser dub and rip stack as we did with the purple and place the center of the bunch right over our thread and give it a couple of loose wraps. And I said before, it's better to err on the side of too little dub than too much dub and straighten it out a bit if it wants to rotate over the shaft and try to cover the sides of that, that hook shank if you can. Give it a couple of turns, rotate the vise, rip stack another small bunch of chartreuse laser dub, and give it a couple of wraps on top of the hook, and then pull that thread toward us and sweep the front part of that dubbing back. Move our thread in front of the dubbing and give it a few wraps and we want to leave it hanging uh, about a sixteenth of an inch in front of the dubbing. And now we're going to repeat this process two more times and tie two additional pairs of chartreuse laser dub to our hook shank. Now our thread should be left just behind our lead eyes. And so now we switch back to purple laser dub. We rip stack a small bunch, place it on top of the hook, tie it in the center of the bunch just as before with a couple of wraps, rotate our vise around, rip stack another small bunch, and tie it in on the underside of the hook using a couple of loose wraps, then tighten it up, and then bring that thread straight back toward us as before and sweep that dub back and, but this time we move our thread in front of the lead eyes and leave it hanging just in front of the lead eyes. We now tie in our second foam paddle just in front of the lead eyes and we place about an eighth of an inch of it on the hook shank 
and we want it just back of the back of the hook eye. Notice I have a little gap. I'm leaving a little gap between the back of the hook eye and the front of the foam paddle. And I angle it toward myself again and give it a few loose wraps and it's going to want to wrap around the hook. So make sure you keep it on top of the hook shank as best possible. And we give it a couple of tight wraps and then wrap down that tapered end against our hook. And we rotate it back on top of the hook shank if it if it tries to move on the other side with us. Give it, give it a few wraps to tie that down and wrap our thread back toward the eyes and tighten everything down. And we want to leave our thread hanging at the back of those thread wraps just in front of the eyes. For our final material tie-in, we grab another bunch of purple laser dub and rip stack it just as we've done before. And we place it on top of the hook shank just in front of our foam paddle. And we give it a couple of wraps. And notice that I keep the thread back against those lead eyes. Give it a couple of wraps and then rotate the hook. Grab another small clump of purple laser dub, rip stack it, and place it on top of the hook shank just in front of the lead eyes. And again, give it just a couple of wraps and pull that thread straight back toward us and then sweep those front pieces of dubbing back over the lead eyes. And while holding them back over the lead eyes, let's build a small thread head up to the eye of the hook and back against the dubbing. We next take our whip finish tool and give it a four or five term whip finish to finish the head. Now if that dubbing wants to catch under the whip finish, just grab it back with your fingers and hold it out of the way and trim our tag end off to finish the head of the fly. Now at this point our fly looks pretty messy to say the least, so let's clean it up a bit. But the first thing I notice is that my paddle is not on the top of the hook shank, so let's move it around a bit till it gets there, otherwise the fly won't track properly in the water. And then we use our fingers to start smoothing the laser dub back, being careful of that sharp hook point. I grab this nylon bristle brush to comb out the laser dub and smooth it out even more. So I give it a few brushes on each side of the fly to sweep those fibers back and kind of get everything really nicely aligned on the fly. And we have a few scraggly fibers on the back of the fly and we can just pick those out and pull them off of the fly. You'll want to finish the fly off with a bit of head cement or super glue on the head of the fly. And I think you'll agree that this is a beautiful fly, very colorful, and it's been highly recommended as a very effective redfish and speckled trout fly. So I hope you'll give it a try. It's a fun tie and I hope it catches fish for you.